see double expansion going down for prod, uh, protozoid, which is a bit unfortunate. We do see a stalker is finally out, so we are finally going to start taking up. I'm going to go back to just faster speed and see that our friend here, protozoid, is just going to fall back. Um, does he have warp gate yet? No, we don't have warp gate yet, so we don't need proxy, although we might want to just throw down that proxy. Definitely. One thing that I first started doing as a Protoss player when I played a little bit early on when I was in like, the gold was uh, I would kind of get warp gate and then realize, oh fuck, I'm just sending out my probe out. You want to send your probe out way ahead of time, get your proxy down. Some players in higher league have their probe out right away. Not right away, like at 7 or something like that. So many videos like that. But, you know, somewhere on like the just get that out there, throw down your proxy before he's able to scout you down. We have a lot of spine crawlers down. Very good indeed. Are we teching up? We do have a good amount of uh, gas saturation going on. Very nice. We do have a roach wall. Awesome. Awesome. Roaches against Protoss in almost any situation, especially against gateway units, is very fun. Very fun indeed. We have our friend here, Protozoid, not really doing anything, just chronoing out probes. Um, one thing I will notice if you're double expanding, be careful with your spawn points. This, there's no reason that this has to send probes to this base. Just have them go to this base. Um, we did to probes on this line, so we're just going to actually speed up a little bit. We do have our proxy finally down. This is going to look pretty bad for our friend here, Mysterious, although he does have a lot of spine crawlers up, so I don't think this push will really be able to do anything. Um, I will note one thing, um, at the relatively higher leagues, i.e. gold, platinum, that area, um, high platinum, low platinum, doesn't really matter where, it does seem, um, at least from my experience, that uh, ZVP is very, very, very strange right now, uh, because both sides are in one way forced to do one thing, which is um, the Protoss has to forge, forge fast, expand, go into a relatively land-based game, or go straight for air. And if they go land base, they must have a lot of sentries and go for immortals at the same time, which is a frustrating thing to do. And if the if the Zerg player sees he's doing that, then the Zerg player must go for roaches, otherwise they're just fucking screwed. Uh, and the same in, the, in inverse, if he's going for air, then the Zerg has to finally get up the air or go for fungals and hydras and that sort of thing. Um, it's it's very very weird um, right now the actual ZVP matchup in general. And watching some of the uh, recent like the games kind of games it's been very interesting. By the way, if you are a low-level player, it doesn't matter. If you watch pro games, you don't necessarily have to take their strategies as pro strategies don't necessarily work in the lower levels. They actually usually don't um, because so many weird, wacky, crazy stuff happens. But just watching them to see their mindset is so key. It lets you see how to just kind of brush off these seeming, seemingly insurmountable odds and just be like, I got it. I'm good. I'm good. I got this. I got this. I got this. But what we see here is our friend here, Mysterious, just masking up them roaches and roaches and speedlings. Very nice indeed. We do have our layer up. We're going for roach speed. Very nice. I used to think when I was like a bronze level player that roach speed was the most worthless fucking upgrade in the game. I was like, why would you want that? You can just go for burrow and um, whatever, burrow legs or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, tunneling claws. There you go. I just thought that, you know, roach speed was useless, and now I just see it and go, oh my god, they get the Protoss especially, and all over the place, and that, having that roach speed is so amazing, to so get all of the roach speed, so, so, so these are force fields there, uh, one thing you really want to do with the roach player is cut them in half, cut your roach in force in half, or if you really chunks, that is the absolute number one way to piss off the roach player, especially the Zerg player, but we do see a pretty good amount of uh, difference in Food at this point, as we do see that our front, our enemy protozoid is pretty much getting really, really, really greedy, throwing out his fourth expansion, uh, which if if left alone would be nice. However, we do see that series is pushing out very, very good. Uh, gonna go ahead and clean up those cells. Nice, nice. We do see a lot of mineral income if we go to the income tab. We can see that our uh, enemy protozoid is huge amount of income. Really, don't want to waste our first field there. In this situation with this many roaches, if you're a cross player, throw it down on the ring. You want to just give yourself the time to get up more units. And against roaches, what you really need to do is get immortals. Get immortals, get immortals. We can see one immortal coming out. Very nice. A lot of fucking gateways. Why? Because there's no fucking gateways. Um, 
so, but yeah, this is pretty much the end of the game. This Roach pushes them easily enough. At this point, it is basically an all-in, as our friend here, Mysterious, doesn't have an economic backup. However, he does have a shitload of Roaches to just kind of hurl at him as a baseball bat. A few Roaches going to come around from the back. Very nice. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, just going to run away. No, that was off. Oh, would have been perfect. If you advance with the Roaches at the same time as you're kind of sandwiching the Protoss army. Oh, that's unfortunate. Actually, a few seconds Dogs. Not really going to be using it. However, at this point, it's good. We do have the force field, however, we can use it. Just a little bit out there with the Katara. That's pretty much going to be GG. We do have a huge amount of income still for our Protoss player, however, that is mostly in minerals. Nom, Zealot, and Light. Zealot, not that good. So, that is going to be the end of this game. Uh, one thing I would kind of, I'm going to just do at the end of all of these is going to be recap just a little bit of what each player can do from what I've seen. Um, I do like, to an extent, the reaction of Mysterious to this two-gate push. Um, I actually died a lot when I was a Bronze and Silver League player to these two-gate pushes of just going, what the hell, what do I do against this? Um, our player here, actually, Protoss would be pretty lucky the close spawning positions of Mysterious and he so that those zealots didn't have a long way to walk. I would personally prefer, if I was going to do something, which I would also not suggest that Protozoid continue this build, um, if you are going to do that, maybe proxy here, or proxy back here, somewhere where it makes your zealots be just that much closer. But otherwise, good job by Mysterious. Um, one thing, you have a huge amount of overlords who really want to spread those out throughout the map. Uh, just give you vision pretty much everywhere. Could use more creep spread, especially with this many queens. Um, one really good thing is to just hotkey. Let's see, do we have a hotkey? Let's see. Oh, cool. We do have these two queens, which I assume are our creep spreading queens, on one hotkey. Very nice. Going to want to just keep them out on the edge. Due to the way that creep spread just gives you vision, if you see something coming, you can always just fall back with those queens. But we do see that... I actually really like the hotkeys of our friend here, Mysterious. We do have our main base hot, uh, our main base queen on two, and our expansion hot queen on three. We do want to be just kind of hopping back and forth between those, giving us just this checklist of information. Again, if you are in, if you want to learn more about that sort of stuff, go to day nine. Great stuff. We have both of our hatcheries on four. There are, however, some macro things that really need to be worked out. Um, these Evo chambers need to be much, much sooner. Uh, and one big thing is figure out your macro hatch timing. Figure out when you need to throw down another hatchery so you can get production up faster. Because one thing that was kind of a problem for our friend Mysterious is that he just couldn't spend his money. So you want to get your macro hatch down around 9 minutes. Probably 10. I, can, I occasionally get to the point where I throw it down at 11, depending on what is happening in the game. But otherwise, a very good game on the part of Mysterious. We don't really have any guys in these geysers. I don't know when they went down, if it was recent or not. Um, for our friend Protozoid, just way too greedy, man. Way, way, way too greedy. Um, also going to want to get more Immortals and focus more on the Sentries, less on the mineral income against a Zerg player going Roaches. Uh, if he was going for a pure Zergling attack, then yes, Zealots is a very good thing. If you are getting Zealots, you do want to get those upgrades. What is our, where's our Forge? There's our Forge. Uh, do we have any upgrades? Can I do one just a little bit? Angry Slurk. Uh, we do have plus one and plus one on the shields. Uh, however, we do have Cyber, not Cyber, uh, we do have Cyber, uh, we do have Cyber, uh, 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 Twilight Council going so we can get more upgrades, that sort of stuff. But otherwise, good game. Uh, again, one thing I would suggest for our player here, Mysterious, to get out of Bronze League is to uh, focus more on uh, getting vision and scouting in the early game, be able to just keep an eye on whether or not he's just sending more and more zealots. Um, and then late game, make sure that your overlords are spread out at least somewhere. Uh, it is tempting to just throw them back in a corner, but it is very, very important to have them go somewhere. And also, if you are going for creep spread, one thing I, I've noted in my gameplay is, um, at least when I first started moving up in gold, I realized that when I started working on creep spread, I got very distracted and couldn't work on my macro. So for a time, I just said, fuck it, I'm not going to do creep spread for like 10, 15, 20 games. I'm just going to focus, focus, focus on macro. And I just didn't build any extra queens. I just focused on getting my injects perfectly. So I would say, 
figure out which one you want to do. Do you want to focus on creep spread? If so, work on these queens. Make sure that their energy is like at nothing. But your creep spread is amazing. Uh, and then, say, spend other games where you work on your macro. Make sure that your injects are freaking perfect. Um, look up, find what the best time for whatever build you want to do for throwing down your macro hatch. That sort of thing uh, will help you a lot. But otherwise, very good reaction to this two-gate kind of push, which is relatively not seen in higher leagues. Although it is seen, it is not nearly as just absolutely just, you know, taken for granted as it is in lower leagues. Thank you again, Mysterious, for sending this in. This is going to be Flag signing out for this game. However, I'm going to be bringing a bunch more games in the near future. It is warm as hell here. It is during the summer. And in order to do this, I have my window closed in a uh, dorm room that has no AC. <laughs> so I will be bringing these out relatively slowly, at least relatively slowly compared to the rate that I was doing during the summer. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for sending these in. Please keep sending those videos into missionstarcraft.gmail.com. This is going to be flag signing out. See you guys in the next